Classical music channels national spirit, but it can also cross boundaries. That certainly applies to the Refugee Orchestra Project. To tell us about its next performance are the conductor Lydia Inkovskaya and soprano soloist Jana Alkazova. Thank you both very much for being with Thank us. Thank you so much for having us. I want to start with uh, Lydia. For people who, who didn't uh, tune in when this started last year, talk about who, who are the people in this orchestra. Yeah, the Refugee Orchestra Project brings together refugees and immigrants, some children of refugees and immigrants and some supporters in putting on concerts that showcase music primarily by refugee composers and on themes that are related to wandering or seeking a new home. Joanna, talk about your background. Uh, you, you grew up in Massachusetts, but you started off somewhere else. Yes, I was born in Moscow, in Russia, and we immigrated here uh, in 1994 to Worcester, Massachusetts. I went to Worcester Academy, Clark University, then BU, so I'm kind of a, I grew up here, but I was born in Moscow, yes. Well, you, in this program too, you, you've got composers, that, some of them, you know, they go back a ways, but you also got a contemporary composer who's contributing here who also has a sort of a refugee story too. Yeah, Mati Kovler is one of the composers whose works we're featuring. Mati is Israeli, uh, although he went to school here in the States and is now based in New York. And Mati has a piece that's a Debussy song that he's reworked that, and the song takes place during World War I and follows children who have been displaced during the war and who on Christmas are homeless and without any support or gifts. The song will be performed by the orchestra together with soprano Mal El Shrafi, who is the child of Palestinian refugees. Sure, so I want to ask you about one of the pieces you're singing because it's from a famous opera by Verdi, Aida. Aida. And, you know, operas, you know, they can be code. You know, it's supposed to be about, you know, Egypt and, you know, and Ethiopia. But this is, you know, Verdi was an Italian patriot. And, and this, you're, you're singing about this woman who's captive in Egypt. Uh, tell us a little about your, your, your aria, Patria Mia. Oh, Patria Mia, longing about uh, my native land. Everything I'm, I have left behind, I'm not going to ever see again. I realize this by this point in the opera. <clears throat> and it's very much, um, it resonates, uh, I believe, with a lot of refugees. And I think this is the most fitting aria for this type of an event that we're going to be doing on Monday. Monday, yes. <laughs> yeah. We could talk about some of the other things. I mean, you've got part of the, the New World Symphony by Dvorak, mm -hmm. very, very familiar, and he was a voluntary visitor in America. But talk about what, what he was tuning into. In, well, the talking. thing that's important about the New World Symphony is that it brings together European music, of course. Dvorak was a Czech European composer together with Dvorak's impressions of American music while he lived and taught here. So of Native American music, of African American music. And to me, American music in general is defined by this melting pot of cultures and of music coming in from different directions and different angles. And that's what Dvorak was tapping into. And uh, we feel that the spirit of the work is uh, tie so closely to the message that we're trying to convey. And, and you get uh, pieces by Bartok, a Hungarian patriot who, who was also very mm -hmm. multicultural, very interested in Romanian Balkan music. Yeah, and we're doing uh, the Bartok um, Armenian folk dances, which are actually based on material that Bartok gathered from folk communities. He traveled around the country with, back then, a very old-style cylinder recording device. We still have some of these cylinders available, actually, in archives today and uh, recorded m music from folk cultures that he then incorporated into his works. And, and of course, he ended up a refugee in America. Um, exactly. Boston Symphony helped him, Kuzovitsky. You know, exactly, right? and so Bartok uh, is another transplant from another country. We also have some refugees that one may not think of as refugees. We're featuring an aria by Donizetti. And Donizetti was for a time a political refugee from Italy. In Italy, there was a great deal of censorship of operatic works. Actually, Verdi was also a victim to this, and many of Verdi's works were changed to appease the censors. Uh, but Donizetti, for some time, had to escape Italy and seek political refuge. Joni, you, you've been involved in a number of performances with this organization. What, what's it like with all these different kinds of people? Incredible, incredible. I um, always say that. The thing that moved me uh, most, I believe, our very first um, project that we did, <coughs> concert that we did, that I was involved in, this was last year, and I remember there were several members uh, in the orchestra who were saying, well, I'm not a refugee myself, but uh, my mother 
is a refugee, my grandmother is a refugee. And that resonated so much with me because being there um, at that concert for all the musicians was such an incredibly moving uh, feeling process because they, some of them, they didn't have to be, but they really wanted to come out and support and they understood it. And the audience understood what we were trying to say, which is most important. I think by the end of the concert, when we were in DC, I heard so many stories from people coming up to me from the audience and they were all coming up to me and telling me about their families stories whether it be first generation or fifth generation uh, I think that's what we're all about is explaining and showing how we're all related in this uh, refugee uh, process as you may one interesting thing about the process, Jean, it, it, it seems that maybe more so in this country than some places in Europe, is that refugees are not just tolerated or given some help, but you're allowed to be visible and, and really go public with what you are. Yes, yes. It is so essential and so comforting and so important for us uh, to be uh, speaking out. As Lydia always says, and I, I thought of it as well, um, some of us... Um, who came here very young uh, lost our accents some haven't and so when we are in the society a lot of people don't realize oh you are a refugee and all of a sudden that changes the conversation a little bit because we sort of go about uh, our daily lives not realizing how many of us are amongst us Lydia, what about the timing uh, here? Because, you know, the, I mean, sure, you know, we have this history of tolerance, but, you know, we also have some strains around refugees, too. Yeah, when I founded the project, uh, some of this rhetoric was starting to come to light. Uh, it was when the Syrian refugee crisis began, and I was traveling in Europe, and I was so amazed by how welcoming people were of refugees and how many small towns opened up their doors to refugees. But here, despite the fact that we are separated by an ocean, that we have so many uh, checks on getting into the country from uh, abroad, that there was so much xenophobia and so much fear of having outsiders come in. Um, and to me, some of this fear came, going back to what Jana said, uh, to people not realizing just how many first generation refugees or actual refugees are among us, but also that all of us are refugees. The pilgrims were refugees. Uh, the Native Americans were refugees within their own nation. Uh, that all of us came here from somewhere else and that our culture and the strength of our country has been made possible uh, by this. And I think that message uh, should, has become even more important. I think it's very easy for us to forget how much a part of our country this is. So our hope through music is to show some of this. Um, among some of the classical works that we perform, uh, we also do some music by Irving Berlin, whose songs are so well known and beloved. And among them is God Bless America, which is seen often as a type of second national anthem, but most don't realize that it was written by a refugee. Refugee from pogroms in uh, the Russian Empire. Exactly. You probably mentioned the exact time and place of the concert we're talking about. The concert is on Monday, May 22nd at 8 p.m. at First Church in Cambridge. And uh, it is completely free and open to the public, although we encourage that donations, which will go directly to International Rescue Committee and HIAS, he Hebrew Immigrant Aid Society. Both organizations support refugees around the globe. And if anyone's interested in learning more information, they can go to refugeeorchestraproject.org. Thank you both very much, uh, uh, Lydia Inkowskaya and Jana Alkazova from the Refugee Orchestra Project. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Great.